Hi guys, welcome to a special Xcode programming tutorial and today we're not doing any particular functions in the app, we're just looking at debugging in Xcode and Objective C. So we'll take a look at NS logging, breakpoints, uh working out what errors mean, what errors look like and how to find an error within your app. So um today really I'm just gonna create an app called debug lesson and I'm just going to do iPhone um, doesn't matter here at all because really this is for in your app when you're getting errors you can reference this tutorial and see how to fix the errors pretty much um, let's start with common error and I'll show you what an error looks like Let, let's create go, let's create a let's add a button into our UI view controller and this is just so we can experiment around with creating an error and I'm going to create an outlet and an action for it. So you guys don't need to follow along with this uh, tutorial. This is more if you do get an error, you can have a look at this tutorial, find how to best use this tutorial uh, to help fix your error. So I'm going to create an action called action and an outlet called button. And let's then go into our .m file and under view deadline, I'm going to do button dot hidden equals yes yeah and I'm now getting an error as you can see my error is a well let's say I'm in the app delegate dot and I see I've got an error when I try to build it I don't know where the error is and I don't want to have to go through all my code I'm just going to click this little exclamation mark and it's going to show me in the warnings tab on the left hand side of my screen where the error is and if I click on the error it will take me straight to it because it's a circle Xcode believes that it has the solution to my problem sometimes you're going to get a circle you're going to do what it says and it'll just come up with more errors so you need to look at what it's thinking it's saying there's an expected semicolon after expression so here this is an expression and obviously being an expression in an object oriented programming language we're going to need a semicolon at the end and that's a simple error that you'll probably make a bit so it's just saying insert a semicolon, so I'm not even going to bother typing a semicolon. I'll just click this, and it's going to do it for me. And I'm back to no errors. Um, I could have a uh, different error. I could just type yes, not not in capitals, and that's going to give me an error. It doesn't know what the solution is. It, it thinks yes, it is a variable or an identifier. It's not. It's meant to be code that I've done incorrectly. So I know there's an error on this line. I don't quite know where, so I can fiddle around with that. That's just going to take some common sense. There's no way to, go, uh, there's no way to go. Well, I've got no idea what I'm doing. It, it, that that's you can't do that. What you might experience is you might have this button, and you might run the project, and it might crash immediately, and you'll have no idea where or why it's crashed because you got no warnings and no errors. You got no issues. So I, um, I can't really replicate that because the circumstances will always change. So instead what I'll do is I'm going to um let's make button dot enabled equal no and then button dot hidden equals yes uh equals no. Oh no let's make that a yes. So I've got some code here and I know that the error is occurring somewhere within this action because when I click the button that's when I get the error. That's when the app crashes. So what I can do is I can click on the left in this line here. I can, if I click there on a line, so I want to, I can put uh, a breakpoint. And you'll see that it'll appear as a blue arrow. And I can edit breakpoint and do a whole lot of things with it. Um, and what, and don't worry about any of this. But what, what that's going to do is it's going to run the application up to here. And after this line, it's going to stop the application. It'll pause the application. I can show you what I mean by that. Let me just quit iOS Simulator and reopen it for you. It's going to... I'll run it. And you'll see what will happen is the button will become un disabled. And then the application won't crash. It'll just pause. It'll just sort of freeze. So I'll click on it. So it's stopped at breakpoint 1.1. If I go back to the simulator, as you can see, it's just frozen. It's just paused. Now what I can do is I can click this sort of play pause button, continue program, so it'll then skip over the breakpoint and continue. And it's then hidden the button. Um, 
and then of course I can always pause the program again. What I can do while it's open is if I had a variable, for example, if I hovered over the variable, I will get the values of it. And if I run, rerun this, you'll see I'll get all the values down here. So I, I get the value of the button, the pointer, which obviously you don't understand at the moment, and you don't need to, but sometimes you'll see an obvious error there, like you'll make an integer equal 1, and down there the integer will say it equals 0 still, and then you'll also go, okay, so clearly it hasn't processed the integers equals 1. You'll go to your code where you've said int i equal 1, and you'll go, okay, so there's an error there, I haven't done the right code, or I've, I've created a whole new integer by accident. So that's that. what that's useful for. Um... But that, so that, that's breakpoints for you. The next part, which I believe is probably one of the most useful things to do, is NS log. So let's say uh, I'll show you. Uh, sorry, I'm going to bring up this editor here, and you'll see in this output area, this is where Xcode are going to log things. So if Xcode gets a slight error, it'll put it there. It's not going to. It might not crash the app. It might just give you a little warning here in the output section. If you can't see the output section, it means your segmented control here is selected to only show uh, the pointers. So you need to show the variables view and the console. So then this is the console and say I want to after the button's been disabled log something. So I want to you know just type button disabled so I know that it's gone through that code because maybe the button's not disabling and that could mean that it's ignoring this code for some reason. So I need to test whether the code is being ignored by putting some code after this line to see if anything happens. So type nslog and you're going to get uh, that, that's what it will look like and then do at two talking marks it's going to be a string then do a semicolon after the bracket and then in here is what I want to log so I'm going to do button has been disabled and of course you could format you could previously format a string and you'll see this sometimes and previously format a string to uh, equal the error and then you can log the error that, that's complex and I'll show you that in further applications but this is the basics of NSLog so what will happen now is I'll click on the button it will become disabled and it will log that text there that I have set it to log so let's move this over a bit I'll click on it button has been disabled so it's not paused the application it's disabled the app it's logged it then it's hidden the button so it's done all the code but it has logged the um, lo logged what I've asked it to and it will give me the time the name of the application, the location, which is the pointer, which you don't need to worry about, and then what you've done. I could put another one after hidden, so I could then do ns log button is hidden. And now if I run it again, it's going to disable the app, uh, log that it's been disabled, hide the button, log it's been hidden, and then just pretty much just do nothing after that. So I'll click on it button has been disabled, button is hidden, and you can see it's happened uh, one millisecond or, or less than a millisecond, I think that's, I uh, no, well that, that's the time of the day, so I'm recording this video at 12.30, 4pm, and then that's, so you can see, that, that also shows you how fast the phone will be, so if I ran that on an iPhone 5, it might be 0 0.125 and 126, and then if I ran that on an iPhone 2G, which was the first ever iPhone, which will probably be much slower. It's going to probably take a bit longer for it to process all that code, and so that might then be 128, and that's just the time that this has been logged. So NS logging is also important if you want to keep up with your code, if you want to go, okay, if you want to be able to process in your own head what's going on, so you can go, okay, so now I know that it's recognised that I'm going to the next level of the game, so now what should happen is an alert should come up, because it knows that I've gotten to the next level. It's logged that, so it clearly has got to that code, but for some reason it's not showing the alert. So I can then go into that section of the code, put a break point, and see where the error, what, which line the error is occurring, see if there are any warnings or errors on that line, and if not, go through each code. And so you really narrow down your options to the point that you should be able to rectify the error. You'll get common errors, things like SIGBART. Um, you may not have experienced that, but SIGBART, I think, I do know how to replicate it. If I go into my .h file and let's go make sure the button's hooked up and everything. If I then go into my .h file and delete action, uh, if I delete outlet button, if I then go into my nib, it's still hooked up but there is no button I think. So that should replicate, this should give me an error. Yep, it's giving me a little warning here. There's no, it won't show up here. 
You'll have to go into your XIB and you'll see that there's a warning. The button no longer exists, but it's still hooked up. So if I now run this up, it should crash immediately. Yep, it's just crashed. I've got Sigma. So it's gone. Okay, so we'll link it up. We'll, you know, go to the Apple Delegate and then we're going to go into the nib and we're going to hook up the UI button to an outlet cool button. And then it's going to go, hang on, there is no outlet cool button. What's going on? And it's going to really confuse the program and it won't know what to do. And in this situation, I mean, th this is what it said. It said, terminating app due to uncaught expression, NS unknown key exception. And then it's gone, it said that, it, in, it said, you, you know, a whole lot of weird numbers and things. The only clue you've got here really is to see, okay, it said view controller and this is called view controller. So let me go into my, I've got no errors or anything. It says view controller. So that probably means the issue is something to do with the XIB, which you don't tend to get warnings for in the main console. So let me go into my file zone and right click. Ah, there we go. There's the error. And then I'll cross that and instantly that'll disappear because it no longer exists. And if I now run the app, it will work without any issues. So that, that's a good way to debug. Um, there's not much more to it. That, that's the basis and the basics of NS logging, breakpoints, and just general debugging in Xcode. If you've got any questions or you um if you've got any questions, comment on the video or visit nine and get in touch with us. If you've got any uh projects that you're working on and you've got issues in them then feel free to contact us and we'll check them out, fix them up and send them back to you. So just also go to the website 99centsappdevelopment.com and visit get in touch. So I think that's 99centsappdevelopment.com forward slash get dash in dash touch. Uh, I think that's what it is. But just go to the website up the top. You will see the get in touch page. Um, and from there you can contact us. You can upload your app to us and we can check it out for you. See if we can find the error. And then we can, we're also, we'll keep updating this video if someone sends in an app that has a really complex bug that we think, great, a lot of people will have that bug, but it's quite complex, then we'll, we can, we might add an addition to the video. So keep checking out this video. Uh, as I've said, it's not really one that you follow along with, it's more uh, an Xcode special and one that you can then use in your own applications when you get errors. I will, in further tutorials, we'll have uh, our specials like these every so often. They might be debugging, they might be general Xcode tools, they could be anything really. And we'll have them every five tutorials or so for you to check out to help you along with your own Xcode projects. Uh, I'll also cover further debugging in our more complex tutorials when we do need to debug. And often you'll see that I, I do these tutorials completely improvised. And I might get an error and I'll you'll be able to see me stepping through them, which is also useful. And sometimes I'll do that deliberately just so you're able to follow along with my, my thinking process as I go through looking for the error. So thanks for watching. Um, and feel free to comment on the video if you've got any questions or just want to comment on the video. And we'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe and like and check out the website. It's got a lot of helpful tips that I'm sure will help you along the way too. Uh, thanks and we'll see you next time for our tutorial on... So the, uh, uh, we'll do the next tutorial will be social framework. So posting things to Twitter and Facebook. See you next time. <laughs>